The minion has come. A gathering of those, some of us searching for healing, for community, for connection. Others returning to hope and renewal, to seeing family and good friends here in this shul. We know we come with varying Jewish beliefs, God or no God. But this shofar, it beckons us. As does the round challah, the sweetness of apples and honey, to tshuva, to renew. In a time of challenge, we seek hope. Turning, we know that can come. It's in this minion that our lives can begin anew. So the minion is here. Shana Tova, we welcome you. And I ask you to take a moment and greet someone you don't know and say, I'm glad you're in the minion. Turn around and say hello. <clears throat> We hope you'll do that afterwards too, that we'll build up community. For now, we look for Esa Enai on page eight. Esa Enai El Harim Me'ayin Me'ayin Yavu Esri bring in new lights for the new year. On page 11, I invite the Porth family to come forward to kindle the festival lights for you to join with us in prayer. We're grateful for the work that they do in the community to help all the Jewish community. We're on page 11.
ready for Shekihanu, everybody? Get ready. Welcome in that year. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechianu Vekimanu Vekikianu Fifteen. At the new moon, at the full moon, for our feast day, we sound shofar. For that's the law of Israel, the way of God of Jacob. Praise God with the blast of shofar. Baruch Adonai, Shomer kol teruat Israel Takia. We get a little taste of the eve of Shofar. <laughs> We're on page 17. Please rise as we go to the ark. Pachad Yosef Tehilot Yisrael Bati Lamod Litchanen Lefanecha Anamcha Yisrael Asher Shelach Uni Lamon, you live a 
On page 16, together, here I am, one soul within this prayer community. Like those around me, I bring my own concerns and yearnings to this place, hoping they will find expression in the time-hallowed words of my people and in the traditions cherished by generations before me. May I bring the best of my energies to these holy days, approaching this spiritual work with open heart and mind, sincerity, and sustained focus on the deep questions of this season. Who am I? How shall I live? Where have I fallen short or failed? This night, I take up the challenge of the days of awe, Heshbon HaNefesh, a searching examination of my life, a moral inventory of my deeds, words, and thoughts. During the next 10 days, let me face the truth about myself and listen to your still small voice, taking comfort in your promise that I am always free to change, released from staleness and routine. Let me know the joy of beginning again. May I gain strength as I share this task with those around me, united by our common purpose Tikkun Midot, improving our characters, and Tikkun Olam, repairing the world. I now prepare myself to pray, one soul amidst this holy congregation. Page 19. <laughs> Our God and God of our ancestors, may we know your blessing in this year, 5,779. Together, Eternal One, bless us and the whole house of Israel with renewed life, happiness, and peace, comfort and courage, resilience and strength. May the words of our heart be acceptable to you in this new year that stretches before us. We are forever grateful for the gift of life. Please join me on page 22. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher bidvaro ma'ari varavim, bechokma poteach sha'arim, uvitvuna meshanei itim, umachalif et hazmanim, umesader et hakochavim b'mishmeratem barakia kirtsona, borei yom v'layla, golel or mipnei choshech bechoshech mipnei or, Umavir yom umevi laila, umavdil ben yom uven laila, Adonai tseva ot shemo. Echai v'kayam, tamid imloch aleinu leolam
page 24. Six and please rise. Just a word the regular melody that you're used to singing for the Shema is different than what we sing for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And I don't believe that I've taught it to you yet, but you may have heard it somewhere. And it's it's a feels it has an urgent haunting quality. It's a it's a little interval. It says like this. We're going to try that to the Shema like this. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevon Machuto Please be seated. Page 28. And has, as has become our custom in this service, you will chant the Vehavta. I'll start you off and then you continue. Hadvarim <laughs> Shartam le o dalya decha, beha you the tota foho, bene necha. Uchtap taham, al mizuzot betecha, ubi sharech. The mahantis keru, vasi tehem et komitotai, vi tem kedoshim lelohecha. Ahani Adonai Lechem Asher Hotzeiti Etchem Neretz Mitzrayim Liot Lachem Lelochim Ahani Adonai Lechem Page 33 You have stayed long enough in this place, God said. Time to go forward. 
Turn your face to the future. Believe that you can cross this sea and survive. Inside you is a Moses. Within you, Miriam dances, unafraid. Lift up your voice and sing a new song. Page 34. family to Tahoe, which is my favorite place to go and anywhere in the world in the summer. And we hiked down this mountain from where we parked, we got down to the water and it was that perfect emerald water that only happens in Tahoe. And we got to the beach and there was this big rock and I was watching people jump off and jump off and jump off into the water. I decided I needed to do that. So I go and I scurry up the rock, incredibly excited because it looked easy, it was safe. And I got to the edge of the rock and I looked over and I got stuck. And I was terrified. I knew it was safe, I knew I'd make it, but I was stuck to take that jump and that plunge. This season is about jumping. We may have seen it last year, we think we're gonna be okay, but when you actually get to that edge and you think about the conversations you might have been avoiding having, the parts of your life which you just didn't wanna think about, that's what it's like to go into the darkness. It's why we sing Hashki Venu. Hashki Venu is this reminder to us that it's okay to step into the dark, to step into things that you're scared of, because eventually that sun will come back, the morning will dawn. But you only can get to the light of the morning if you step into the darkness, if you jump off that rock. Page 36. Hashki Venu, Adonai. Oh. 
Cottage is on page 40. Beit Yisrael Bagala Uvizman Karib Imeru Amen Yehi Shemira Hamevora Lealam Ularme Agaya on page 42. It is also a bit different because of the additions for the holiday. The tune's a little different. Boy, you're getting to know it. Join with our cantor as we chant together. Adonai, Adonai, Sephatai Tita.
גומר חסדים טובים וקונה הכל וזוכר חסדי אבות ואימהות ומביא גאולה לבני בניהם למען שמו באהבה זוכרנו לחיים מלך חפץ בחיים וחוטבנו ספר החיים למען חיים חיים מלך עוזר ומושיע ומגן מגן אברהם ועזרת שרה אתה גיבור לעולם אדוני מחיי הכל אתה רב לחושיע מוריד התעל מחלקל חיים וחסד מחיי הכל ברחמים רבים צומך נופלים ורופא עולים ומתיר אסורים ומקיים אמונתו לשני עפר מי כמוך בגבורות לחיות הכל, ברוך אתה אדוני מחיי Civilization advances, the sense of wonder declines. Such decline is an alarming symptom of our state of mind. Mankind will not perish for want of information, but only for want of appreciation. The beginning of our happiness lies in the understand that life without wonder is not worth living. What we lack is not a will to believe, but a will to wonder. Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel. וכן תן כבוד אדוני לעמך, תהילה לראייך, ותקווה לדור אשיך, ופתחון פה למייחלים לך, שמחה לארצך, ו... 
May the sparks of David, your servant, soon grow bright enough for us to see a beam of light in the darkness, a promise of perfection. Page 51. Knowledge of God is knowledge of living with God. A Jew is asked to take a leap of action rather than a leap of thought. He is asked to surpass his needs, to do more than he understands in order to understand more than he does. In carrying out the word of Torah, he is ushered into the presence of spiritual meaning. Through the ecstasy of deeds, he learns to be certain of the hearness of God. Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel. This is the season of God, the season of our humanity. This is the day when one word stands at the very center of Jewish prayer. Maloch, three Hebrew letters, Mem, Lamed, Kaf, reign over space and time. Maloch, reign over the infinite expanse. Show us your reality. Help us to see our finite place in this cosmos that is our home. What is God's sovereignty? What is the rule of holiness? Together, it's the rule of unity by which we sense coherence in the universe. It's the power of relationship, relating every image of God to every other image of God and to every facet of nature. Sunshine and ocean waves, heartbeats and honeybees, the stuff that stars are made of. It's the ultimate power that governs our lives with wisdom, compassion, truth, and kindness. In this season of God, may we breathe new life in the ancient name, Melech HaOlam. And may that ruler of the universe breathe new life into each of us. There's a famous story of the kid who was in shul who didn't know how to play, how to pray. So he pulled the flute out of his pocket and he tooted on the flute. And he got in a bit of trouble until the rabbi said, well, to his father, that true prayer that came from that 
at flute. That was the prayer that made all our prayers go to heaven. This is quite a flute. <laughs> the shofar. Its sound is the ancient sound. And you may struggle and not know how to pray, but you have that same power. The sound of the human heart, of your spirit, of your longing. So take this moment and connect to your heart. Use the prayer book if you'd like through page 68. But start to pray your tshuva. Chant to yourself, what am I working on? What am I grateful for? What are my longings? Or just hear that heart, that original prayer. And when you're done, be seated.
It is so powerful to see all of us gathered together throughout these High Holy Day services. During these gatherings, when we all stand together for a prayer, we can imagine ourselves standing with our ancestors who all stood together at Sinai to receive God's commandments. Imagine that Sinai moment with me. What exactly did they hear? Some say that each one heard all 613 commandments. Some say they heard the Ten Commandments. And still others say that all they heard was the first commandment, Anochi, I the Eternal, am your God. One teaching, which I am going to focus on tonight, imagines that each person at Mount Sinai heard only the letter Aleph. Now, the Aleph is the first letter of the first commandment. So they heard the Aleph. But the Aleph has no sound. The Aleph is silent. Imagine what a mystical moment that must have been. Rabbi Kushner shares a Hasidic teaching that the Hebrew character Aleph itself is constructed of two other Hebrew letters, a diagonal vav and two yuds, aleph. Rabbi Horowitz of Ropesich taught, Adonai, God's name, starts with aleph. This, he says, hints at the face of a human being. What does this mean? Well, two eyes resemble the two yuds, and the nose is a vav. You have to use your imagination a little bit here. In other words, on every human face, there is a letter aleph, which stands for God's name. When we gaze into someone's countenance, they're punim. Whether the face of someone we love or someone who upsets us, Jewish tradition teaches us how to see the face of God. How easy it is to see the divine in the faces of those we love. Seeing God's face in someone who makes us feel uncomfortable, this is one of the greatest lessons of Torah. Remember the drama between the twins Esau and Jacob? The two brothers had been estranged for years. Then they grew up. Jacob wanted to come home. And to do so, he had no choice but to see his brother. So what does Jacob say when after all these years and all that fear, he finally faces his brother? He's silent for a moment, just like that silence at Mount Sinai when we all heard the letter Aleph. Then he looks at his brother and he says, to see your face is like seeing the face of God. Can you imagine being able to look into the face of an adversary or even just someone who unsettles us and to see that special spark in them. You don't even have to believe in God for this idea to become a transformative practice in your life. But it can be difficult and painful. We can recognize what arises for us, fear, judgment, shame, but work to not allow these forces to rule us. We all possess an inner critic, 
And it's good to sometimes challenge the voice from within that tells us to avoid people who are different than us. I know this from my own experience. The day I started middle school, I recoiled and backed away from a deaf girl who was trying to befriend me. In that moment, I did not see the face of God in that girl. All I saw were her differences. I feel like I, of all people, should have known better. I wish I had challenged my inner critic at that moment because, as many of you know, I grew up with a sister with a stigma, the stigma of mental illness. In childhood, my sister Lori was treated like a pariah everywhere we went, even sometimes at our temple. She lives with schizophrenia, bipolar disease, and paranoia. When you look into her face, you, you see the mental illness right away. You can also see the two yuds and the vav. Yet growing up, too few people saw the face of God in Lori. Most only saw that she was different. If you've experienced anything like this yourself or in your family, you know what I mean when I tell you how painful that was for Lori, for me, for our family. For any of us, it could be a family member with a mental illness like my sister, but really any perceived difference, any otherness. Difference could be a family member with an addiction, with a non-binary gender identity, an LGBT family member, a learning difference, a difficult marriage, a divorce, a medical condition, domestic abuse, or it could be one of our high school kids who's not going to college, or a family member who is socially awkward. These are just a few examples. The tendency of our culture is to respond to all of these differences with the silence of an olive. But the Torah feeds our inner critic with an alternate response to silence. It's just one word and it's in the story we will read tomorrow on Rosh Hashanah morning about Abraham and the binding of Isaac. Whenever called upon, Abraham always responds, Hineni, which means, here I am. This can be our takeaway on this New Year 5779, but it's not an easy takeaway looking past difference is so hard. We are easily overcome by embarrassment, shame, or fear. Yet these spiritual teachings of our tradition invite us to look into each face, those we recognize with love, and those that make us feel uncomfortable because they are different. Look for that yud, yud, vav, and respond, hineni, here I am, I see you, and I see the face of God. When I've written about my sister's mental illness, many of you have emailed me or talked with me privately, detailing a mental or emotional illness and its impact on you and your family. Now, some of us are very private, and we always want to respect an individual's privacy. But we want to balance privacy with creating community space here at Temple where it's not only okay, but holy and healing to share something personal. This summer, I visited with one of my dearest friends on the East Coast, 
somehow in the most casual way, he mentioned that his young adult son li lives with anxiety disorder. For a moment, I felt shocked that he was just, I was just hearing this now. I'd known this kid forever. But then I stopped. You know, my younger daughter has struggled with anxiety since high school. And I had never shared that with this friend or anyone else for that matter. In fact, it's something I rarely talk about, even with all of you. Why? At first, I myself did not believe or understand that my daughter, who's so accomplished, would have such a problem. And maybe I felt some shame that something about my parenting must be to blame. Everyone else's kids seemed fine. So what was wrong with me and what was wrong with my kid? Better to keep this to myself. So I understand our human tendency to keep things hush-hush. But is keeping all of this to ourselves working? The suicides of public figures shook so many of us to the core this past year. Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain, among others, ended their lives. I heard from so many of you after these terrible losses. It really didn't matter if they were Jewish or not. Each one had a private or semi-public struggle with depression, and however much we thought we knew how depressed they were, we had no idea. Almost 50,000 Americans die by suicide each year. Suicide rates for teens keep rising. That's why naming stigma is a matter of life or death. The great writer William Styrone compared the agony of mental illness to that of a heart attack. Pain is pain whether in the mind or the body. So why, he asked, were depressed people treated like pariahs? Imagine if instead we infuse the silence with the sound of our voice saying, Hineni, let's talk about it. Let's hear people's stories of living with a stigma of mental illness right here in our temple. What if we were to openly talk about our new mayor's controversial ideas about moving mentally ill people off the streets to a place where they can get real help? Imagine if we partnered with JFCS, Jewish Family and Children's Services and others and made mental health, mental illness awareness an annual part of our teen curriculum. Imagine if our kids didn't only feel that clergy are there for bar or bat mitzvah, but came to us throughout their development to share their struggles with a rabbi or a cantor. Rabbi Alan Liu of Blessed Memory has this wonderful book I think we all should have. It's my favorite title. It called, it's called, This is Real and You Are Completely Unprepared. In it, he recalls that Sigmund Freud introduced the single great idea that the invisible is more important than the visible. I think about everyone carrying a secret, a secret pain, of any kind, we could make the invisible visible. A few months ago, a friend and I were catching up. She told me that her eighth grade son was on his class trip to Israel. Her son is so smart, but he often stands at the edges of peer groups. I told her about eighth grade groups that Rabbi Rodich, Ariana, and I take each year from Emmanuel to Los Angeles, the famed eighth grade Disney trip. 
I noted that sometimes there are a couple of kids who stand on the edges of the social circle pretending to have a good time, but I see their wish to be part of the crowd. Then my friend told me a story I will never forget. She noted that she too was a shy and awkward child. But here's what's amazing. She said, there was this very popular girl at my school and for reasons I'll never understand, she saw me and felt I would be a valuable part of her group. When she pulled me in, other kids started to treat me differently, all because of that one girl. Some of us need to be pulled in. And sometimes we forget that we have the power to pull others in, to be the one who sees God's face in each person. These stories, these stigmas are challenging. If you are a parent who feels that your child isn't as socially accepted as other kids, that hurts. If you feel like you can't let people know about your addiction, that's isolating. If you have a hard time with mentally ill people or are impacted by mental illness in your family, you are not alone. But I tell you, picking up that practice of looking for the holy in each person, that's a starting place on the first day of the new year. Remember that midrash about all of us standing at Sinai and hearing that silent aleph. Here's a way to help you remember. I brought a prop. Our talented artist, Sandy Cohen Wynn, hung new beautiful banners in the Martin Meyer Sanctuary and you'll see them next time you're in there. Every time you go there, you can look for this Aleph, which hangs now from the Martin Meyer Sanctuary in one of the prayers. Yud, Yud, Vav, I, I, knows. Think about the person who distresses you. Look for this Aleph. Look for that special spark on their face. We all stood together at Sinai. We quieted for just a moment to tune into something silent and invisible. It's the feeling we feel when we feel excluded. You hear no sound, you feel invisible. It's the feeling we feel when we exclude. But it's also the feeling and the presence of God when you say, Hineni, here I am. That's the sound. It's the sound of silence and it's the sound of the sacred in each of us. The new year is here. We say, Hineni, here I am. I see you and I see the face of God. Sometimes we feel invisible. But at moments like this, we remember that we are part of something so much greater than ourselves. We turn to one another and we say, to see your face is like seeing the face of God. Shana Tova, may it be a sweet year.
my family did I am not the voices in my head I am not the pieces of the brokenness inside I am Take a deep breath, everybody. We have another Hinani moment as we turn to page 76 and we rise for Avinu Malkainu. Avinu Malkenu in Lanu Melech Ella Ata. Avinu Malkenu, Almighty and Merciful, you alone are sovereign. Avinu Malkenu, Laman Chag Achem Aleinu. Avinu Malkenu, for your sake, show us mercy. Avinu Malkenu, Ase Imanu, Laman Shemecha. Avinu Malkenu, act towards us as befits your name. Avinu Malkenu, Shalach Refu Ashle Ma, Lechole Amecha. Malkenu, bring healing for all to all. Avinu Malkenu, Kara Roa Gazar Dinenu. 
Avinu Malkeinu allay the harshness of the decree against us. Avinu Malkeinu katvenu b'sefer geula the Yeshua. Avinu Malkeinu zochreinu b'zichron tov lefanecha. Avinu Malkeinu, remember our goodness and call it to mind. Imanu Malkeinu osay l'man ech oshienu. Imanu Malkeinu, act for your sake and save us. Avinu Malkeinu, Shema Koleinu. Avinu Malkeinu, Almighty and Merciful, hear us. Avinu Malkeinu, Chatanu Lefanecha. Avinu Malkeinu, Chamol Aleinu, V'al Ola Leinu, V'tapeinu. Avinu Malkeinu, and us and all our families. Avinu Malkeinu, Kalei Deva, V'chere, V'ra'av, Me'aleinu. Avinu Malkeinu, Kalei Kotsar Umastin Me'aleinu. Avinu Malkeinu, halt the rain of those. Avinu Malkeinu, Katvenu Bersefer Chaim Tovim. Avinu Malkeinu, Chadesh Aleinu, Shana Tova. Avinu Malkeinu, renew for us a year together in the Hebrew. Avinu Malkeinu, Hanenu Vanenu. Ki ein banu maasim, ase imanu sedaka behesed oshienu, avinu malkenu, almighty and merciful, answer us with grace. For our deeds are wanting. Save us through acts of justice and of love. Avinu malkenu. Vinu makenu Chamol alenu Avinu makenu
we turn to page 82 for the Alenu. Alenu le shabeach la don hakol la tet kedula le utzim breishit shen lo asanu kigoye aratot when lo zamanu kimish pachot adama shen lo of everyone. Uh, I was told at the last service that I didn't introduce myself. I've been up here a lot of times, but my name is Donnie Friend, for those of you that don't know me, and I'm serving as the board president at the present time, and wanted to just give you a little guidance for the next uh, days of, of awe that we are beginning. Um, we have a food drive, as we always have. This year, we will be asking you to bring uh, protein only uh, to our bins. We have bins that we're set up for the Jewish Family and Children's Services and the San Francisco Marin Food Bank. You can choose when you bring the food, whichever one you want. Uh, and also, we, we want to try and feed the hungry through uh, the Mazon uh, Jewish response for, to hunger. So uh, if you want to help them, you can send checks. <laughs> uh, for for uh, our guidance in the in the services tomorrow, we have a family service uh, for five to ten year olds that uh, starts at 2.30. And we have a, a teen led service, which is always a great hit here, it starts at 3.30. Uh, at five o'clock tomorrow, we have Tosh Leek, which will be at Baker Beach. You should dress warmly, although you never know, we might get a really hot day again. And uh, bring some plenty of bread to, to spill your, your sins into the into the sea. We have a, a um, we have a special for the second year in a row now a, a second day of Rosh Hashanah worship that we will uh, conduct on Tuesday at 9:30, and we hope that you will come uh, grace us with your presence. It's a it's a wonderful way to to round out the, the holiday. Um, very glad to see all of you, and uh, want to wish you a hearty Lashana Tova. In the midst of the cycle of the new year, there are also those who have come because they're in mourning. If you're a mourner, as I point my talit in your direction, and you want to call it someone's name that you're honoring tonight, please do so. Ask the mourners to please rise. Our Kaddish is on page 90. 
and it's our custom to bring support and comfort to you and then to stand together and say Kaddish for those who have no one to say Kaddish for them. We honor their memory. We pray that their light, their love guides us and that we support each other as we say Yid Gadal V'Yikadash Shemei Rabah Be'almad Dibrach Hirute V'yamlich Malchute V'chayachon V'yamechon V'chayei D'chol Be'i Yisrael V'agala V'zman Kariv V'yamru Yehei Shemei Rabah M'varach V'elam Olmei Almaya Yid Barach V'yishtabach V'yid Pa'ar V'yid Raman V'yid Naseh V'yid Adar V'yid Ale V'yid Alal Shemei D'kusha V'richu For Rosh Hashanah, Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Ha'am, Veromem Banu Mikol Ha'ashon, Vekidshanu Vemitzvotav, Vatitein Lanu Adonai Eloheinu, Ve'ahava. Everybody now. just to add that when you uh, tonight as you leave please leave your prayer books on your seats we're in the pockets in front of you um, they'll be the same ones used in the morning and that way we can save ourselves a lot of work and also if you bring your child to uh, services tomorrow during the day I guarantee they will still get into college so I will write a note to the school and we are on page 94 for our closing hymn <laughs> 
energy and we feel like we get credit because we showed up to Shul and we're happy you showed up to Shul. But this is only the beginning. You only get credit when you think about what is that one conversation you've been avoiding? What is that one face that you haven't looked at, that you haven't seen the nose and the two yuds? Where we're supposed to look in that face which all year long it started with the day not talking and then it turned into a week and then a month. And it might have been years. And these next 25 hours, you could change everything. I don't know And that change is a change of the self. It's a change of the community. But we're also reminded that today is the birthday of what in our tradition? The birthday of the world. In the streets of San Francisco this week, people have marched to say we have to do more to see ourselves as God's partners, to share this world with each other, to repair this world, and to make sure it's a world for the future. So see yourself and the tshuva that you have to do and the role that we can play and the voice that Jews can add to celebrate all life and see ourselves not as users of the garden, but as tillers of this garden and this life.
Not the bar. 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 Not the bar.